in a world dominated by the powerful Runkendal clan, who ruled with strength and ambition. The story focuses on the youngest son, Jin Runkendal. Born into a family renowned for their extraordinary talents and prowess, Jin believed his destiny was guaranteed. During a pivotal selection ritual, Jin chose the Patriarch's sword, a symbol of seizing control of the clan's fate. His clan members held high expectations for him, and Jin basked in the newfound admiration. However, as time passed, Jin realized he lacked any talent for swordsmanship, a dishonor and embarrassment to his clan. His brothers, aware of his shortcomings, relentlessly bullied him, belittling his efforts and breaking his only wooden training sword. Despite the hardships, Jin remained determined to earn his family's approval through hard work, hoping to redeem himself and carry his clan's flag with pride. But fate seemed to conspire against him, pushing him further to the depths of despair. Ultimately, Jin's lack of talent led to his expulsion from the clan. He left without causing harm, attempting to meet their expectations but falling short. It was during this period of isolation that he encountered a master who revealed Jin's forbidden talent for magic. Three years of dedicated study allowed him to harness mana, leading to a fateful summoning by Soldret, the god of shadows. Soldret offered Jin a contract that granted him the power of shadow spiritual energy and protection against curses. Soldret disclosed that Jin had been cursed with the Blade of Illusion in his childhood, suppressing his swordsmanship talent. However, with Soldret's help, the curse was finally lifted. The god promised to watch over Jin, ensuring that no curses would harm him again. Filled with hope, Jin witnessed the results of his hard work firsthand, believing that his perseverance had finally paid off. Yet, his newfound success was short-lived as he was unexpectedly attacked and left severely wounded, desperately pleading for help that never arrived. As Jin lay in pain, on the verge of death, he questioned the purpose of his given chance when it seemed destined to end in futility. Suddenly, he found himself transported back in time to when he was one year old. This time, however, Jin willingly chose the Barisada sword during the trial, fueled by dreams of the glorious future he had failed to achieve in his previous life. Jin's choice of the Barisada during the ritual startled the members of the Run Candle clan, as no child had ever chosen it before. Following this unexpected decision, Jin's father commanded him to relocate to the Storm Castle, where children traditionally stayed until they reached the age of 10. However, Jin still had three years left before he was to leave the castle, as it was a customary practice in their clan. Six years later, while still residing in the Storm Castle, Jin witnessed a disturbing incident. He caught sight of his brothers intentionally killing a bird, with their eyes fixed solely on tormenting him. Fully aware that it was his brothers who were behind this act within the confines of the castle, Jin confronted them directly. In the face of their mockery, Jin's anger surged as he recalled their infamy as murderers in their past life. Although he had initially chosen Barisada to avoid his brothers, they had managed to find another way to torment him. Unable to contain his rage, Jin retaliated and prepared himself for the consequences they would face. In a stunning display of power, Jin stopped his brother's attack with a mere hand gesture and silenced them, telling them to shut up. Overpowering both of them, he warned them to steer clear of him. Khan, a witness to the fight, offered to take Jin's injured brothers to the hospital, but Jin had a different plan in mind. Instead, he ordered Khan to accompany him outside. Jin buried the slain bird and left his brothers to endure the pouring rain, believing that they needed to learn the gravity of their actions. On their way back, Khan suspected that Jin had utilized forbidden mana energy, which should not exist within the realm of the Run Candle clan. Feeling obligated, Khan decided to report this to the clan patriarch without delay. Meanwhile, Jin who had employed spiritual power rather than mana, knew that Khan would report him. However, 
he remained unperturbed because his contract with Soldret, the powerful entity, shielded him from the bladed illusion curse, which still held validity in his new life. Understanding that he had to face his father and confront the consequences of his actions, Jin braced himself for what was to come. As Khan reported the incident to the clan patriarch, an assembly was swiftly summoned that very night. Everyone, including Jin's siblings, marched toward the castle, driven by the urgency surrounding the children staying in the storm castle. The confrontation awaited Jin, and he knew that he would have to confront his father and face the repercussions, unaware of the unforeseen events about to unfold. While traveling together, Mary and Dyfus Runkendall engage in conversation about the upcoming assembly. Mary inquires about the purpose of the gathering, and Dyfus speculates that it might not be solely concerning the Toner brothers, who were scheduled to arrive in a year. He suggests that their father might be visiting their little brother instead. Mary expresses curiosity about their younger sibling's significance, prompting Dyfus to remind her that he was chosen to wield the Patriarch's sword. Although Mary momentarily forgets this fact, she ponders that their little brother must possess some usefulness for their father to personally meet him. While Luna Runkendall appears unfazed by the situation, Mary contemplates its potential impact on their future endeavors within the clan. Meanwhile, Jin ponders the actions of Khan, who had reported witnessing Jin utilizing unknown abilities similar to magic. Jin believes that Khan is an inflexible individual who would have truthfully reported exactly what he saw without making assumptions. Jin suspects that his father is coming to witness his powers firsthand and assess whether Jin can contribute to the clan's future prosperity with his newfound abilities. When Siren Runkendall, Jin's father, enters the castle accompanied by his siblings and the Guardian Knights, he initially calls upon the Toner brothers, Hey Toner and Day Toner. He asks them to explain the mistake that led to the sudden altercation. They vehemently deny any wrongdoing and accuse Jin of attacking them first using forbidden magical abilities, all the while smirking with malice, emphasizing the forbidden nature of magic within the clan. Jin realizes that he is now facing severe consequences. Mary decides to interject during the confrontation, but her father silences her before she can finish her sentence. Siren Runkendall asserts that they cannot survive within the Runkendall clan if they continue to behave like incompetent children. He then summons Jin to step forward and provide an explanation for his actions during the incident. Jin's father is described as the strongest and coldest man Jin has ever known. Having attained the status of a demigod, known as the Genesis Knight, he is the most powerful being of his time. Jin reflects on how his father became obsessed with the clan's prosperity after reaching demigod status, losing the basic and fundamental emotions that once defined his humanity. In Jin's previous life, his lack of talent in swordsmanship rendered him useless to his father, and he was treated as an insignificant nobody. However, in his new life, Jin believes that his father will be unable to ignore him because he refuses to allow history to repeat itself. As Jin enters the room, formally greeting his father as the Patriarch, Siren Runkendall asks him to identify the mistake committed by the Toner brothers. Jin responds with a single word, revenge, and explains that it is his duty as a Runkendall to repay what they have received, be it kindness or hatred. Mary becomes excited upon hearing Jin's response, as if she sees herself mirrored in his words. Subsequently, their father requests that everyone except Jin leaves the room. As his sister exits, she acknowledges that their brother isn't all that bad, having earned a one and on conversation with their father. Siren Runkendall demands that Jin elaborate on the power he used against the Toner brothers. Magic is forbidden within the Runkendall clan as it hampers swordsmen from reaching their full potential despite their relentless efforts. Jin assures his father that his power is neither aura nor magic and offers to provide a name for it if his father doesn't object, as he proceeds to reveal the extent of his abilities. This sudden revelation dawns upon Siren Runkendall, 
as he realizes that it is the same power once used by the clan's founder, the first patriarch, and wonders if Jin is truly destined to be the future patriarch of the clan.